Can I get the appearances, please? Good morning, Your Honor. Appearing on behalf of plaintiffs. Could you stand up, please? Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Appearing on behalf of plaintiffs. Thomas Van Hahn, appearing on behalf of the debtor. Your Honor. Would you stand up, please? I apologize. Would you come up to the lectern, please? Are we ready for opening statements? No, there are no opening statements. Okay. It's my understanding that there's been a, Your Honor, a summons to establish entire non-dischargeability. Is that? And I just learned about this this morning. Is it your wish to proceed with this hearing at this point? I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. It's come to my attention that the trustee put in a summons to basically not allow the debtor to be discharged. Okay. I'm prepared to try this case today. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Well, then we will, if it's all right with you, we will proceed. That's what I'm here for. That's what I was planning to do. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Would you like me to call my first witness? Yeah. Okay. Unless you want to call your second one. No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, I would request permission to treat Mr. Kep as an adverse witness and use leading questions. Do you need my permission? I don't know if I do, but I'd rather have your permission up front. Why don't you just ask questions and see if anybody objects? Okay. Very good, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, I would like to introduce an exhibit. I've never done this in federal court. I would ask the procedure you would like me to follow. You say I offer exhibit one. Okay. Or two or whatever it is. All right. I don't think it's any different any place else. Okay. I would offer exhibit two. Ms. Forcier, if you would flip to exhibit two, please. Okay. Is that the check written from your husband to the defendant? Actually, exhibit one is from my husband to the Glencoe Garden Center. Okay. Exhibit two is from myself. Okay. We will go through exhibit one with your husband. Your Honor, as a rebuttal witness, the defendant would call Kevin Post. Well, there's no one. Rebuttal witnesses come after the defendant's case. Right. There's nothing to rebut. You don't get to rebut their case. They put in a case. The testimony of Mr. Kep cannot be rebutted at this point? No. Okay. If the defendant does not come up as a witness in the defendant's case in chief, then there would be no rebuttal? No, I'm sorry to be instructing you on civil procedure, but if you have witnesses to call, you should call them. Okay. Then the defendant gets a chance to put on their case, and after the defendant puts on their case, then you get a chance to put in your rebuttal case. That's how the system works. Okay. Plaintiff calls Kevin Post. Your Honor, I'm going to object to this witness. This witness was not noted, was not noticed. Witness is not on the witness list? Is that what you're saying? That's correct, Your Honor. I did not anticipate needing to call him until Mr. Kep testified falsely. Okay. Well, if he's not on your witness list, then you can't call him. Can I make an offer? Trial order is specific. May I make an offer of proof? Sure. Okay. During the break, Mr. Post came up to me and indicated that he had been in contact with the defendant, and Mr. Post would testify. No, I'm not. Okay. Limit your remarks to what you think he will testify to. Okay. If that is the case, then the plaintiff's arrest. Well, let me start with the easy one, Section 523A2B, which creates an exception to discharge for false financial statements. The complaint itself fails to allege any false financial statement. It seems to refer to 523A2B without any facts to support it, and certainly there was no evidence today to support any case under 523A2B for providing a false financial statement in writing. So the debt clearly is not accepted from discharge under 523A2B since there was no false financial statement. The case that was attempted to be proven was 523A2A for actual fraud, and the elements of actual fraud are actually not laid out in the plaintiff's memorandum, but they're laid out in the defendant's memorandum. 